You've joined the Raspy Voice Kids for another RVK Gold and Blue interview. This is Brandon Phoenix, a.k.a. Mr. I Also Hate Pit. I'm joined, as always, by Jeremy J.N. Fien Phoenix. But far more important than any of that is the fact that we are joined by the defensive coordinator for your West Virginia Mountaineers, the man from Van, Coach Tony Gibson. Coach, thank you for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Always. You're, you are welcome anytime, any place. <laughs> Absolutely anytime. Now, I, I want to I start by, by uh, reading a quote, something that you said in an interview. You said that, you said, I went other places, made all this money, but it wasn't the happiness I had here where walking out onto the, that field really means something. And you were talking about being at West Virginia University. What, what is it? What what does it feel like to work at the flagship university of the state of West Virginia, to work at the most recognizable institution in our entire state? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a dream come true for me, my family, uh, just, just to be a part of the, the great traditions here that, you know, started way back before me and, and obviously will continue on after all of us. But uh, it, it's just uh, to be able to run out on Mountaineer Field just means so much. And to, to come out to, to those fans and see that flying WV come out of that tunnel. And, you know, I, the one thing that I always do, I always try to beat the team out and stand there and watch those guys come out of the smoke. And, and every time I get, you know, tears in my eyes and goosebumps and there, there's no feeling like it. Oh, I man, believe I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I really do. <laughs> I believe it, too. I know Michigan's real big on having a Michigan man, and, and we're not the kind of people, Jeremy and I, where we feel like it's got to be a, a home state guy, but it is special when it's someone who understands what it means. Now, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, there, there, there's no place better, obviously, growing up in this state and the, the passion the fans have for it and how much it means to our state. That's the, uh, that's the one thing that always sticks out in my mind. I, I can still remember – Back when the miners in 2005, Coach or uh, Joe Manchin, the governor at the time, was with us in Atlanta for the Sugar Bowl, and that's when the mining accident happened. And he left, and his wife Gail stayed along. and And I can remember after our game in the locker room, getting on, and you know, I don't know if it was Skype. I don't know if Skype was back then, but uh, even mm -hmm. FaceTime. But I, I remember talking to the governor was actually, you know, congratulating the team and coaches and, and all that. And he was at the site and he said, even through all this, you know, people still care and people were still rooting and listening to the game and, and all that stuff. And, and just to be a part of culture like that and, and traditions and, and how much it means to the people of this state. Yeah. I, I always want to be a part of that. And we're glad that you are now. There was a time period where you weren't. And I know you also made a quote in that same interview where you said, as a coach, you got to go where the jobs are. And that makes sense. And it's not yeah. just as a coach. As a man, you got to do that. You got to feed your family. However, you did spend some time at a place about 70 miles north of where you are now. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. It's a good way to put it. And that's all we're going to say. What I want to know is what did you do when they sang Sweet Caroline? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I didn't know that song. So I only know the bad version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, I understand. I just wanted to know what happened in your heart, and you answered my question perfectly. That's all I needed to know, Coach. Now, as fans, when we see injuries, when we see transfers, when we see the rumor mill on social media, because as you see, I'm sure, everybody's an expert, everybody's got a source, everybody's cousin's got a sister who's got a boyfriend who knows a coach, who knows something, people get panicked, people get upset, because we only know part of the story, or we only know what we think we know. How do you, as a coach, how do, how do you respond to that? How do you keep things under control in the offices, in the locker room, when those kinds of things transpire? Yeah, well, what, what most people don't know, and obviously we're running the business here, and, and you know, it, it is still a game, but to us it's a business. It's our livelihood. And sometimes those choices aren't just the players that want to leave. Sometimes, you know, guys aren't the right fit, whether they're a great player or, or a bad player, whatever it may be. That's not everything we determine stuff off of. We recruit these kids and it's our job to develop them. Sometimes guys fit into the system. Sometimes guys don't. And, and 
attitude and and the way that they act and and the way that they try to play or don't play or whatever it may be that that's all part of you know guys that want to leave and and as coaches we got to do what's best for this program yeah this is much bigger than all of us or any individual players and and we make decisions what we feel is going to help the 2018 West Virginia football team so uh you know it's misfortunate that some of the guys leave but you know, I, I'm not going to waste time and talk about guys that don't want to be a part of it. And, and we we got plenty of willing bodies and able bodies, and we feel they're good enough players to help us reach our goal. Now, your brother said, uh, it was the same interview I'm referencing, um, he said that if you tell Tony that he can't do something, you better get ready. And your response right there is exactly the attitude he was de- that he was describing. Absolutely, 100%. I love that so- response. We're buckled oh, yeah. up and re- we're buckled up and ready to go now, uh, Jeremy. You had a question you wanted to ask him. No, um, when we come, when we think about the three three five, you know, I'm a I'm a fan. Brandon's a fan. We're a fan of Tony Gibson, man. We love the man for Van. We love what you represent and who you are. Um, what is it about the three three five that makes it special for West Virginia that most fans just don't seem to get? Like you hear things and and we just don't get it. What is it about the three three five that's so special to us? For well, I, I think the number one thing when we went back when we went to this defense in 2002, I thought the same things that the fans thought. You, know, Coach Rodriguez came in and told us, "Hey, we're we're going to change our defense to three three five or an odd stack or whatever we want to call it." And we all looked at each other. We were all four down guys: uh, Coach mm-hmm. Castile, myself, Todd Graham, Paul Randolph. Uh, that that was the original staff at that time when we started switching over to this thing and I thought three, three, five, what the hell is that? Just what our fans probably <laughs> said. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it became a part of our culture here. And, and that's the one thing that the kids believe in the system and, and on paper. Yes. It says a three, three, five, but if you really study and what we do and how we use our spur position, we're, we're a three, four team, uh, which 80% of the NFL is right now. Yep. Uh, so, you know, we could call it what we want to call it. I know people, if we're struggling against the run, they say, well, we need another D lineman. Or if we're not getting a pass rush, well, we need another D lineman. But if we're giving up, you know, a bunch of throws, well, wow, we need another DB. Well, we can only play with 11. So, you know, our culture was built on this 3 3 5, and we won a lot of games back my first time here. And when I came back, the one thing that the kids, and I'm talking Quit, Jared Barber, Shaq Petaway, they were all part of that. They were still part of Coach Castile. You know, when he was leaving, they, those guys were here, and they just won the Orange Bowl. Uh, you know, I know they scored 70 points on offense and, and all that, but they also played pretty good defense too. And, and when I told them when I took over, we're going back to that, they were excited because they're bought in, they believe in it. And they understand it. So that plus the league that we're in, we need an extra DB. We need an extra overhang safety, linebacker, hybrid, whatever we want to call that guy. Nickel. We we need that guy to create different things for us coverage-wise and also to blitz and do different things that I like to do and be aggressive. So that's my belief in it. And, and no matter what the defense that we're in, obviously – People are not always going to be happy. Nobody's ever happy with defense unless you get shut out. So that's right. Yeah, those days, those those days are over with. And you, the the biggest thing for us was I don't care if we're a four down, a three down, a one down, whatever it may be. The one thing that we're going to do is we're going to play hard, and we're going to be aggressive, and we're going to attack people. So that that's kind of our style. That's our mentality, and and that's kind of how we came up with the dog mentality and how we want to play. Dogs. I love it. Now, I, I do want to ask, talking about the 3 through 5 being from Boone County, is it true that Jesco White was instrumental in implementing that defense for you? <laughs> I have him in my meeting room every day. I got That's him on the I, I, I had a good source. <laughs> I thought maybe that was true. Well, all right, Coach. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us. We're so grateful for this. Uh, this was exactly what we thought it would be. No, it is. It, it really Honest, is. Exciting, and uh, we will continue to support you. We'll continue to watch 
uh, up oh. close and from afar, and we wish you nothing but the best. No, absolutely, wish you nothing best, nothing but the best. I love the real answers. Like I asked that question about the three three five. I love the answer I got. It's it's so much more in depth and real. Something that we needed. Um, I do have one question. We regard you as one of the best defensive coordinators in the country. Like that's it's the truth. What you do with what you have, we respect um, tremendously. Is there another defensive coordinator that you you look at and that you just have respect for? I'm sure there's a lot of uh, defensive coordinators, but is there one that you look at and you think, wow, this guy is really, really good? Yeah, there, there's a lot of people that we try to study and look at. Uh, the, the guy at Michigan, Don Brown, is, does a really good job. Uh, I like the style that they play. Uh, I like what Brent Venables does out yeah. at Clemson. He, he's done a really, really good job. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the kind of the, the godfather of defense right now, and, or I don't know if it's godfather or grandfather, he's been doing a long time <laughs> at a high level, Nick Saban and, and he's the man. Know, and, and all those guys. And that's the other thing too, when you really start studying those teams, they play with three down a bunch, probably 80% yep. of the time. Our identity is we do it every snap. Some people do it 80% of the time, but they, they list that fourth D lineman. So. You know, a, a lot of people say, well, they're four down. Well, really, when you watch them, they're not. And, and those are kind of the guys that I study. And and really, probably the guy that I've gotten the most out of, and and that was my time when I was 70 miles north of here, was Dick LeBeau when he was with the Steelers. Yeah. I spent yeah. a lot of time watching, learning, watching film, and, and doing some different things, and, and still have a good relationship with him today. So, Yeah, I know. I love it. I love the answers. By the way – we're fans. Um, look, we, we love what you do. And I believe me, believe me, this year when we beat Oklahoma at home, we're gonna be seeing country, we're gonna be singing country roads with you, uh, coach. I can't wait, guys. I appreciate everything you do for the program, and it's great to have uh, fans and support like you. Thank you. Hail West Virginia, let's go Mountaineers. 